Good day to you. Pastor Ben Crossan here again from Deerfield Friends Church. And it's time for another midweek recap. So you might be asking why I'm holding up this squishy pineapple figure thing today. And the reason why is because it goes a little bit with the sermon that we had this past week. And it was called The House of My God. And it was from a prayer by Nehemiah at the very end of the book of Nehemiah. So with this pineapple, it represents some thinking that goes along with the household that I live in. And what I try to put out to my friends, to my family, anybody that comes in the household of my thinking in my life. Because when I think about a pineapple, and if you hung around me long enough, you've heard this at some time. It's kind of like my personal life, like philosophy. When I think about a pineapple, I think about God creating a sweet fruit. And he was so excited about this sweet fruit that he went, bam, and put some celebration on top. So the pineapple represents the sweet love of Jesus that's worth celebrating. And we pass this out to different people, and I've done this for a really long time. And it's just to encourage people, celebrate Jesus' sweet love in a variety of different ways. So this is the thinking that goes with my household. And so this past week, we were finishing up a sermon series built by God. And once again, the sermon this past week was called The House of My God. And in Nehemiah 13, we see the people of God being a part of God's household and practicing certain things because that's the truth of our lives. The households that we come from, the people that we hang around, the actual houses that influenced us when we were growing up. Maybe it's a school. Maybe it's a house that you hung out with a whole lot growing up or even now. Maybe it's the houses that you interact with at work. They influence our thinking and how we live. And that's what we find in the Bible. People are seeking to live in the household of God and be a part of the household of God. So we had three points from this past week that I just want to wrap up with you guys in this sermon series to finish it up. And the first point that we did, let me look at my notes just really for quick because I need to do that sometimes, is giving unto God. So in Hebrews 13, 12 through 14, in verse 12, we see the Israelites, the people of God, giving unto God in a fresh way. It says that they're bringing their tithe and their different tithes into the temple. And they're bringing grains. They're bringing new wine. They're bringing different things into God's household. And this reminds us of this, that what we give to in life greatly shapes the story of our lives. And we need to be asking ourselves all the time, or even freshly, Am I giving to God how he wants me to give to him? And this can look a lot of different ways. Yes, it can be represent giving unto the family of God in different ways and the different ways that God calls his church to minister to the world. This could be giving to the sick and needy that are around us because God cares about the sick and needy, the widow and the orphan, and how we give to them. But asking ourselves, God, How do you want me to give to you freshly in this season of my life? And that's what God's asking us all to do. The second point from this past week was trustworthy. And in verse 13, we see some people named. And these people are trusted. They're considered trustworthy to look over certain rooms, storehouses around the temple. And this encourages us and challenges us. Are we being trustworthy? in this season of our lives, with what God has given us to handle. It could be our words, our actions, relationships, the work that we do. How are we being trustworthy with what God has given us? Because once again, God has called all of us to a life to be considered trusted, trustworthy with certain people, certain things, our gifts, our skills, our stories, the needs that we find around us. How are we being trustworthy? Then the final point comes from a prayer. And the point is remembering God in his house. And the prayer is this verse 14. I just want to read it for a second. And this is Nehemiah praying. And he says this, Remember me for this, O my God, and do not blot out what I have so faithfully done for the house of my God 
and its service. Nehemiah's prayer reveals the desire of his heart. Because you can find out a lot about a person from their prayers, and especially the desires of their heart. He wanted his life to mean something. And that's something that we all long for. We want our words and our actions, the ways and the days that we spend here on this place called Earth, to actually mean something. And Nehemiah wanted it his life to mean something to his creator. And all of us are invited to come unto God and offer our lives freshly every single day to live it out before our God. And just to encourage us, because that's what the word does, another place in Hebrews 6, 10 through 12, just to encourage us in seeking out a life of meaning before our God. This is 10 through 12, and it says this, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. God has a race for each of us to live out. And he wants us to impact the people around us and to live our lives to love him and to love the people that he sends our way. And when we persevere with what he's called us to do, God has promised rewards. The reward of knowing him forever and being with him forever. And the first step of doing this is making sure that we're a part of God's household and persevering, and being a part of his household. And how do we become a part of God's household? It's through Christ Jesus, his only begotten son. God has made a way, an avenue to connect with him, to take care of our sins, those things that disconnect us from him. Our creator sent his only begotten son, Christ Jesus, to live a perfect life, to die on a cross for our sins, and raise from the dead to show his power, over sin, over hate, over death. And when we trust in Christ Jesus, when we receive him and the work that he's done for our lives, God says that we become a part of his household. We're a part of his family. And there's a household to represent. So the um, final point of this message was God has given us a life to live. You, me, our unique life with its troubles, with the good stuff, with the things that we consider blessings and challenges, God has given us this life to live. Are we being trustworthy with the life that God has given us to live? And just the challenge of this message, the final challenge is this. Every day, around everyone, everywhere you go, represent the household of God. First, make that decision to be a part of the household of God by receiving Christ Jesus. But then, Know that you represent God after you receive him. Because like all households, we represent that household by the way that we live, the way that we talk, our actions. So live a life in all different ways, around everyone, everywhere you go, that represents the sweet love of Jesus, our living God. So you can know that life of meaning that God has for all of us and invites us all to. So with that being said, like all the time we say this, because I find so much meaning in this. If nobody's told you that they loved you today, we love you from Deerfield Friends. Tell somebody else today that you love them. There's meaning in that. And then finally, Jesus loves you so much more. Don't ever give up persevering with that. Opening yourself up Asking God to reveal that to you more and more and more. And asking God to reveal that to the people around you more and more and more and more. And living in such a way where we inspire people to look at this Jesus that loves. So, thanks for being with us today. And once again, we hope to see you around soon. Have a good day.